Hi everyone, I'm Nicholas Mangan and next to me in the next Zoom window is my colleague. Hey, I'm Helen Hughes. Um, yeah, for your reference, I'm a senior lecturer in art history, theory and curatorial practice. Um, and I'm the coordinator of the BARC um, specialization of the honors program. So art, art history, theory and curatorial students. Um, and I also take the theory unit in the honors year. Yeah, and I run the um, studio component of honors. Um, so I'm the coordinator of that, but I also um, uh, supervise masters and PhD students as um, part of my work here. Um, uh, just before we start, I'd like to just um, say that I'm virtually joining you um, from the lands of the Kulin Nation and at Monash we acknowledge and pay respect to the traditional owners and elders past, present and emerging on the land of, of which Monash University operates. We acknowledge Aboriginal connection to material and creative practice on these lands for more than over 60,000 years. And I'd also like to welcome and acknowledge any other First Nations people that are joining us today. So mate, to get started, I'm going to do my best to bring up um, the um, presentation that we've put together. And it's... So here we go. Okay. Um, not sure how to get an answer off everyone if they can actually see this. Uh, you can see it, but maybe yeah, yeah full screen. Yeah. Sweet. Great. So um, thank you very much for coming along to the 2022 honors information session. Um, so today, Helen and I are just going to talk about bit through uh, what we do here at Monash and um, what you would expect um, to get involved in if you were to come and join us next year. Um, what, one thing we do at the start of the year is a way of getting students to know um, the staff that they're working alongside and also to get a kind of sense of the continuity of the program with previous students is that we put together a reader. You can't really see that here, but we invite um, a staff member who's working in honours to submit something that they've recently written. Um, it might be an extract from their PhD or masters or something they've written to an accompanying exhibition. But we also invite them to, to, to um, invite somebody else who um, has written something that they might think might be interesting and a kind of a different way of people thinking about artists or curator. Um, types of writing practices. So um, it's kind of a way that we sort of kick off the year and we sort of submit this um, to the cohort well before we start the year. So people have a kind of familiarity of the way that different people are thinking. Um, the, I think it's good to just jump into what our core units are. Um, you can probably see that probably even better now. Um, so um, I'm just going to sort of start with um, what you'd expect in the studio stream, in the fine arts stream. In semester one, um, it's broken into three units. Uh, in the core unit of the studio is called um, project studies, which, which is basically your studio time. And then you do um, advanced art theory with Helen. And then we also have a studio methodology unit. And um, I'll explain a little bit more about that in a minute, but then in semester two, it's just the two main units that you do. You do your studio practice, and then alongside of that is your um, art theory. And maybe I'll throw it to you, Helen, just to talk about yeah. uh, the curatorial art history here. Yeah, definitely. So um, if you're in the Bach specialization of the honors program, you can either uh, do that in the capacity of a curatorial student or an art history student. So if you're um, doing a curatorial honors, you are essentially as as one of our current um, curatorial students, um, Emma Nixon said, treated as one of the artists, you kind of get a studio and you're down there with all the other artists working every week, doing crits every week in that um, project studies unit. 
Um, but if you're an art history student, you're mainly working on a standalone thesis of 12,000 words, which you develop across the course of the whole year in consultation with your supervisor. And you also, whether you're um, curatorial or art history, undertake the theory unit um, with me. And you have the option to do studio methodologies. You don't have to. Yeah. If you're a curatorial student, I highly recommend it because it's excellent, as Nick's going to explain in a little bit, it's an excellent bridging subject between being a practitioner and you know writing and doing um, art history and theory. But if you're an art history student, you might be more interested in taking either an art history elective or even branching out further and looking at some of the other units that might be on offer in our BA degree and you can apply for um, you can apply to take an elective even outside the fine art department. Yeah. Thanks, Helen. Um, just going to flip to the next page. Yes. Yeah, so um, to come back to studio, I guess um, it is very much about the studio and how you occupy the studio. And I guess the great news for everyone is, is that even if we are unfortunately thrown into another year of some sort of COVID extension, we are using the studios. The student, our students are in the studios right now. Um, because we are a smaller group and it's a one year program, we have um, a, an exemption for that to happen. So um, that's been a real savior for a lot of students and um, to be able to have that nine to five, five days a week studio access. But as a general part of what we do here, it's very much about being in the studios as much as possible and getting that um, co-learning and that also coincides with um, the crits sessions on Thursdays, which is a, also a major part of what we do here at Monash. It's, it's a compulsory activity. Um, it's something that we feel really helps nurture the practice. Um, it builds people's confidence in talking about not only their own work, but their peers' work, but also having challenging critical discussions in at, at what can be sometimes uncomfortable situations, but we try to set up the parameters for that so that with, there is a basic level of respect and understanding at the start of the year so that you, we can move on with more productive conversations around people's works, which we understand can, you know, um, bring up things that are personal or um, intersectional or you know various kind of things that people are exploring and we try to take on a really diverse group of students so that we're not just sort of having one kind of conversation that we're having these different kind of conversations and inviting different people into the program to sort of help um, push that around um, i um just i built this diagram a couple of years ago to sort of help explain what we do in um, in the semester one and semester two as a way of showing you how the studio methodologies unit which I'll explain a bit more in a self works. so there's the studio methodologies unit which is a really intense unit that only goes for half of the year and that informs what's happening in studio and also what's happening in theory and so that helps you to better ask the questions you're asking of the work in the studio, but also how you're framing what you're working on in, in theory in terms of writing around your practice and kind of finding the most appropriate antecedents, references, ways of working. So methodologies is really about what it, what's going into the toolbox and how are you using that to better ask the questions that you want to ask of your work. And that might be taking what you've done in undergrad, unpacking it all, and re-looking at it and working out what needs to be in there, what can go, what might come in. So honours years, it's not a finishing year, it's a year to kind of further interrogate your practice. And so by the time we get to semester two, studio and theory run alongside each other and kind of inform each other as you work towards the, um, the graduate exhibition. So I uh, might throw to Helen here, because this is... Oh yeah, um, I can just say a few words about the theory units. So Nick's managing the studio units and I'm running the theory units and you have to do one theory unit per semester. And, and the way I think about it, the first semester is kind of like an undergraduate art history seminar in the sense that you have set readings every week and we're looking at specific themes. Um, uh, but 
the students have a lot of say in what we are, like what those themes are. So for example, these maps that you can see, um, or that Nick just, no, no, all good. <laughs> these maps are, are what we made this year in our first class of the year, where um, students got into groups and tried to map out what are the key conditions of the present moment, you know, globally that might inform our work. Um, and from then, we were then able to kind of map out, um, if Nick goes to the next page, a kind of reading syllabus with a set of themes um, that you can see here. Um, so for example, we began, of course, with uh, concepts of relationality in place and thinking about indigenous ways of knowing. And then we moved into more like climate crisis, um, eco-feminism, um, thinking about the environment, to toxicity. And then we kind of moved in, like we don't have to go through all of these, but we had a guest lecture from the curator and art historian Tara McDowell, who was thinking about a new research project around mothering and relationships to place. Um, and then what, yeah, we had these other three weeks in a row that were really popular among students. One was looking at um, anxiety and depression as key or, or dominant sort of conditions that we experience um, under like late capitalism, neoliberalism. And related to that, this the, the concept of the attention economy, how our attention is one of the most valuable commodities we have. Um, and that moved into an, another brilliant guest lecture by um, the media theorist, Mark Andreevich, who's an expert in automated cultures and surveillance capitalism. And then towards the end of the semester, we started uh, looking more closely at um, issues relating to subjectivity and representation. So we were looking um, at some of the art historical and artistic practices that came out of the Black, that have come out of the Black Lives Matter movement. We also um, read a lot around critical whiteness studies. Um, and then the final week, we looked at the issue of um, art making in relation to um, mass incarceration, specifically in America. Um, in the United States, but also looking at the um, situation in Australia and the over representation of Indigenous peoples in our in our prisons. So that's just to give you a sense of what we look at in, in the semester, in the first semester. In the second semester, as Nick said, we shift from like an undergraduate model to a postgraduate model where we're really just um, refining your writing practices and helping you write that final exegesis or thesis that accompanies your studio practice or your curatorial practice. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, Helen. And so just to sort of briefly touch again on the studio methodology unit, a methodology is something that everyone's like, well, what is that? Like, and, and, and it's a great thing that um, everyone says because it's really about sort of defining what that means to you individually. It's not about us enforcing a kind of, this is how you should go about making your work and this is how you're gonna succeed if you wanna kind of go through the academic chain. Um, it's really about like, um, it's the techniques and the, and the processes that you use in the studio, but more so it's about how you think about what you do and not just what you do. So it's really a way of interrogating what you do. And so what we do is that we look at the way that other people have done that, other artists, theorists, writers, poets. We use like scientific models, we use um, archeological models, we use all like um, decolonial models, various models that, that might, might have attributes of them that could help inform what it is that you do. So, um, so I guess like there's two ways that that's important. One is it's important in terms of being able to better write about your own work so you can apply for grants or residencies mm -hmm. or that kind of thing. But it's also really important if you do want to go and apply for a master's program, then go into a PhD program and then perhaps down the train go for these kind of more um, in, uh, like decor awards or kind of um, discovery awards or these kind of things that happen a, a bit further down the chain, but, but they all are based on trying to find ways to clearly articulate what it is that you're doing and researching and how it is you're going about asking the questions. So um, I'm not gonna stay on that too much, but it's also a really fun unit because mm. a, a lot of the things that people do in that unit end up becoming part of their actual work we had a student who was looking at queer time and made this clock. Um, had another student that was um, interested in the the kind of their performative self at, at, as alongside their kind of um, more personal self, and so they did a kind of karaoke performance as part of that. Um, let me go to another page. Another student, Sarah 
Umara had as a really interesting drawing and kind of making practice and was kind of trying to diagram the interests that she was trying to explore, but was also sharing some of her um, cultural heritage with the group and was at a point where she was trying to position herself as an artist in relation to her culture and the aspects of that that she wanted included in the work and the aspects that she wanted you know to leave out and to sort of see how that was being read through the work by an audience in various ways. Mm -hmm. um, other students made crosswords, more kind of uh, mind map diagramming and some this is a great work by Aaron Billings who did a kind of um, it was like a story about a glory hole and other students in the, in the group kind of performed that and, and helped narrated that. So a lot of things that happen in studio methodologies kind of is at the intersection between writing and making, which as you, you know, obviously informs um, what you do in the studio and in theory. And it's also that we don't, um, you know, privilege one or the other happening in each other. Like we understand that certain artists have a writing practice. And if that's something you want to include in your application, please do so. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about some of the guests we've had this year. So we had Jennifer Teets um, join us. Um, she's because um, one of the good things about Zoom is, is that you can actually invite people from all over the world. So Jennifer zoomed in from Paris. She's a um, writer and a curator who has kind of built her own kind of research group. And this is a new publication, Electric Brine, that they have put together. And she was sort of talking about the various ways that um, her and the group that she's involved with um, conduct research and invite other people in to kind of um, share different forms of knowledge. Um, oops. Um, Makala Dwyer, who some of you might know, is an artist living in Melbourne who's actually the head of fine art honours at RMIT. So Makala came in and gave a really great um, uh, presentation on her work, but then also broke down into a smaller group with different students to sort of help work through some of the problems they were addressing as some of Makala's work. Um, Lauren Burrow, who some of you might know, is a, um, or was now back based in Melbourne. She was an honours graduate um, a few years ago. You might have seen her work at ACA as part of um, Biography of Daphne exhibition. So Lauren came in to sort of talk about her experience in honours, her further study at Bard in the States, but then also how she's been sort of self-initiated a kind of residency for her pr project up in Darwin and the resulting work that came from that. Mm -hmm. um, we also take advantage of the, the great exhibitions that happen out here at MAMA and this is Lucas Eileen's um, Baking Earth Soil and the Carbon Economy project that was part of um, Shapes of Knowledge exhibition so we do these kind of intensives um, with invited guests and they sort of come in and do workshops based on the studio, studio methodologies unit or also like different interests that different students are exploring. Michael Stevenson, who had a, a major exhibition at MAMA, came in to talk about his research. He also teaches in Nuremberg and has done guest lecturing at the Stadel School in Germany. And he talked about pedagogy, also talked about artist publications and different modes that he's gone about his research practice. And this was the part of the exhibition that was installed at MAMA. And it was really great that we could get in there as Michael was finishing off the exhibition and was quite happy to sort of workshop through some of the problems that he was kind of negotiating as he was kind of bringing the show together. Um, also visiting artist Sean Lynch, who was out here in 2019, actually resumed in with us yesterday. Um, so we have sort of reoccurring guests that come and sort of continue the conversation with the groups. Um, Mariana Castello Dubal, a Mexican artist, who had a, also had an exhibition at MAMA came in to talk about her work um, and culture and the, some of the various projects she'd been working on and what she'd sort of put together as part of her research here in Australia for a show at MAMA. Um, the proposal, I, um, so there are set criteria in the proposal. Um, 
basically we're not going to hold people to their proposal in terms of like, oh, you've submitted this, but now you've changed your mind. So, oh, that's no good. Mm -hmm. No, it's more that we just want to see that you have had the opportunity to think about what you might want to do for a one year full project. Like it's this, you know, it's your first opportunity to take a whole year to do a longer project. And we want to know that you've done some thinking around what that might entail, like how you might go about it. Like, so we want to see a preamble, um, you know, based on what you've been doing, how you're writing about what you've been doing this year, what you aim to get out of the year. That's interesting for us. It's not a, like, you're not assessed on that. We just mm -hmm. like, to, we want to know. Um, and your methods, um, like how you will go about doing that um, and also sees your prior reading and, um, you know, I'm sure, how, and Helen probably agrees with this, is that, like, we're not just interested in, you know, your art history or um, theory knowledge. We want to know what films you see, um, what science fiction you read, what yeah. other forms of, you know, um, reading you're, you're interested in, whatever it is that informs the thinking around your work. So um, did you want to add yeah. anything to that, Carol? I was just going to say one of the students uh, we're working with this year has got this real commitment to survivor the tv reality tv show and that's like you know as we see a legitimate cultural form that you know we can look at in this in this um yeah so yeah feel free to be um experimental and not too narrow-minded about the kind of text you include um yeah yeah in that section yeah because i think to speak to that more is that we're not we don't have an expected kind of academic um honors approach it's more about how can what we do here is set up the framework for rigorous practice. And that can be um, as broad as, as you like. We're interested in people coming, testing, failing, trying again to mm -hmm. test different possibilities for their work. Um, studio allocation, we have really decent sized studios. We have 17 studios. I always like to get this out of the way and say that, that the way that that's allocated is that we draw names out of a hat. But we also take into account, the, once we've selected the group of students, um, if people have special needs, access needs, um, or need daylight because they're making oil paintings or need a, a certain size studio that they can um, bring something large that we're working in or want to be closer to the workshop or um, are working collaboratively with another student that's coming in at the same time and putting the studios in proximity. And as Helen said, we've been, this year was really great, it was the first year we had the um, curatorial students down in the studios with the, with the fine arts students. And so that creates a really interesting um, possibility for dialogue amongst students. Mm -hmm. So um, the interview, do you want maybe want to talk to that Helen just so I'm not yeah kind of yeah absolutely um so we I think we received the applications in mid to late October if my memory is correct and then the interview should happen around the time grad show is up so you're not too distracted by getting you know if you're in third year this year for example you're not distracted trying to get your um assessment work up um, and in the interview, we just basically go through uh, some of the images you've included in your folio and have a chat about them. Um, we talk through your proposal and kind of where you want to, how you want to develop it. Um, and it's it's very informal. We're just kind of responding to the um, application you've already submitted and having a chance for you to kind of talk us through some of the images that might need, require more context than you can give in a slideshow or a, a PDF. Yeah. And I guess we also understand that the last couple of years have been extremely different, different yeah. and difficult for <laughs> students. So we understand that, you know, the conversation that we have is as equally as important as the work and that, you know, like maybe you didn't get some of the grades that you'd had hoped to, to have achieved in the last couple of years, but we also get, get a very good sense of, you know, we try to get a really good sense of people from the interview based on the conversation. Um, so yeah, both the work and the interviewer is equally as important to us. And um, everyone that applies gets an interview. Um, we feel like that's the best, um, you know, if you if you meet the criteria, which is um, really reasonable. So I think every, everyone that's here sh should be getting an interview, but um, just to let you know that if you apply, you get an interview. Mm. Um, 
and the mentor allocation um, at the start of the year, we all give a short presentation of our work, both the staff and the students. So we're all, we all go into a, a room together and we give a short 15 minute presentation on what we did last year or something we did 10 years ago, if we still think it's relevant. And, um, and so we get a sense of, it sort of breaks the ice. It's a, set, it's a way of getting to see what other people are working on, but we use that opportunity to best pair um, students up with um, mentors, we call them here, that your supervisors. So some of the staff we have at the moment is um, Helen Hughes, who's yep. with us today. Um, and um, you maybe you can talk to that Helen rather uh, than me. Well, like, yeah. Yeah. No, you don't need to say too much, but yeah, I've got a background. I'm sort of all over the place, essentially. Like a, I've got a background working as a curator. I've worked at Gertrude and at Mama, the museum here at Monash. Um, and I've also got a, like a long background in making publications with artists and um, art historians and curators. And I also teach um, and write art history myself. And yeah, currently I've, for about the last five years, been working on a, a historical sort of survey of convict art made in Australia in the late 18th and early 19th centuries. But yes, as I said, my interests are all over the place. Which is good. And also Helen participates in the group crits as well. So that we, we really bring the theory and the curatorial and the studio together through those crits. So the curatorial yep. students also get critted on their projects as yep. well, um, which is great. Um, Mel Dearson, who's um, been um, studying here at Monash, who also um, is working with Helen in the theory, has yeah. an interesting... Yep. May, sorry, may, I can just, because I've been working really closely with Mel this year, but one thing that it's, it's worth, to, worth saying about them is that they work extremely closely with students in semester two in a one-to-one -one capacity on developing their writing. And yeah, it's the first year I've worked in this capacity with Mel, and it's been actually extraordinary to see how much attention and detail and feedback she's giving students in a in a one to one way on a weekly basis. So, mm. yeah, I find she's a great um, contribution in that respect. Um, whoops, and um, Mikna Mirkan, who some of you um, might um, know about, who um, was he's he's just curated the the show that's unfortunately not open to the public at ACA. Um, and is also um, living in Melbourne, is Romanian curator who's currently undertaking a curatorial PhD here at Monash. So he's also like in the process of his own research and study, but also working really closely with students through the, the group crits and um, is really generous and a real wealth of um, mm. encyclopedic knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, so Mal also works collaborative with Bryony Galligan, who's been working in the honours programs for the, about three years, who also did their um, masters here at Monash. Um, Ruth Holflish has joined us this year. Uh, Ruth is a um, German artist who um, has a really interesting um, solo practice working with cinema montage um, forms of language and um, also works collaboratively, but uh, also like Lauren studied at Bard College in New York and has exhibited um, really um, wildly across the world, uh, widely, not wildly, and they might've been <laughs> wild, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so Ruth's a, a new addition to the team. Um, Alicia Frankovic, who is a New Zealand artist living currently in Melbourne, um, for those of you who don't know, Lisa has a really um, strong performative and sculptural practice. Um, this is from a work last year in, in Aotearoa, um, which was a performative work based on actually the Australian um, bush, bushfire catastrophe. But uh, also um, Nicholas Mangan, who's <laughs> me. Um, I work uh, across um, sculpture and film um in long-term projects that sort of try to unpack particular historical narratives to do with um australia's kind of um extractivism problem amongst um forms of um trade and um economy so um that's um who we are at the moment we're looking at um getting some other people on board next year 
Um, so this is last year's um, entry thing. So there'll be a new one of these uh, available. I might just stop share um, there. Um, so yeah, so basically um, the interviews would take place around the 25th of November and um, we're sort of hoping to get applications by mid-October, but maybe that's enough from us. Oh, actually, Helen, do you want to just sort of take over a bit and talk a little bit more about um, maybe the curatorial aspect? Yeah, in terms of if there's any sort of points of difference that I um, didn't get across. Yeah, um, I think actually you addressed everything really well, but I guess I would just add that um, the doing a curatorial um, honours year is actually very unique. I'm not sure if you can even do one anywhere else in Australia, um, but I could be wrong about that. But it, it's very unique and very special to be situated in such, you know, a close working relationship with all those artists. We also have, um, we're, we're, where we're located on the, the Caulfield campus, we're right next door to the Monash University Museum of Art, and they've got an incredible collection, very strong in Australian art from the 1960s onwards. And there are a range of ways that curatorial students can engage with that collection, whether kind of borrowing work, or even we have one student this year who um, made, a, made an exhibition around a work that was already on display in the library here, which was really awesome and, and experimental. Um, but as, as Nick mentioned, uh, you know, I think what's, what's very, um, what's the word, what's very cool about being thrown into the melting pot with all the artists is this expectation that you're putting on mini exhibitions or draft exhibitions every couple of weeks in reality, you know, in that project space and having them critted, which I think is very rare for, for curatorial students or curators in the world because exhibitions obviously take months if not years to develop and you often you put them out in the world and get no feedback or one review that like regurgitates the media release so yeah that chance to put your shows up in the project space and have that immediate feedback is really rare yeah. um, and, and, and sorry one more thing i'll just add is that uh, monash also has um one of the first curatorial PhD programs in Australia, which is directed by Pro, um, Associate Professor Tara McDowell. And we've got a, an amazing pool of um, postgraduate curatorial students who uh, are keen also to come in and mentor and have one-on-one, -on -one, you know, crits or shoots with curatorial students. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and also finally, um, you know, I think what distinguishes us from the other universities is that we are a smaller cohort. And so that provides the context for like a more kind of intimate way of building up a rapport and an and and engaged conversation with your peers. So we have, we take 17 students, um, you know, perhaps three, four of them might be curatorial or five or, and the rest of them are, are studio um, um, students. So we, we are a small group. And I think for some people that, that's really desirable to have that more intimate engagement. And it also means you get sort of more contact hours with your mentors. So you get a lot of time with your mentor, but you also get to do crits um, with other staff members as Helen's just mentioned, but also um, the, the group crit situation. And then also like we do kind of like a, a round robin exchange and also invite other, other guests in. So the, the amount of contact you get is is, is pretty high and just that, you know, kind of working in a smaller um, intense group can be really um, a good thing for some students, you know, um, I'm not saying it's better or worse than anywhere else, but that's that's just what, what we have here. And we, students seem to really um, get a lot out of it. I actually, surprisingly, someone said to me, um, they really missed the Zoom crits that was in last year's group. And I was like, wow, I can't believe that someone would actually <laughs> say they missed Zoom. So um, we must be doing something right. So yeah, maybe um, if we want to open up for any questions, um, that would be good. I think um, they come up in the chat or raised hands. I think I saw a couple of hands go up before, but um, yeah. Okay, here's some questions in the chat. Oh, um, oh Sue Ann, great to see you. 
yes, you can nominate specific um, mentors for art history. And yeah, I wanted to, I haven't given enough attention to the art history um, stream of the honours program. Um, it's a great program. You can nominate to work with specific mentors and you always have um, me and Mel Dearson there to give uh, feedback on your writing as well. And then the second question is from Sarah. If we apply this year, is there an option to defer for 12 months or should we apply next year? Um, and yeah, I think unfortunately it's good to apply next year because we can't defer places because um, it just makes it hard to get the numbers when we're, su mm -hmm. we're such a small group. But um, if you feel like doing a practice run for the interview, come along. <laughs> and then, yeah, from I think Victoria, if you apply and you're not successful the first time, can you reapply for the next year? Absolutely. Yeah, we've got um, one of our most, uh, if I may say, amazing students this year. I remember her applying a few years ago and it didn't work out that time. And it's so good that she's come back because she's so ready for it now. And Liz Bird is saying, will crits be in person year, next year? I would, I would, say I think that's a 99% chance that they definitely will be yeah 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 um yeah Scott just also, mentioned yeah. oh sorry sorry I was yes, just gonna yes. say yeah um, Monash has been working really closely with the government to really make sure that we can yeah begin teaching face-to-face -face in semester one 2022 mm. yeah we're gonna get a big logo of zoom and burn it in the courtyard <laughs> <laughs> Uh, any other um, questions or comments or um, feel free also to email me. I'm putting mine email. Um, another question, me. what size are the studios? I'm hopeless with like guessing metrics. Nick, have you got a better sense? Um, they are about four, I think I'd say they're about 4.5 by 4.5 um, meters. So yeah, pretty big. Uh, is there another question there? Oh. Uh, so in the Q&A from John, what's the best way to put together a presentation if the interview is free flowing? Um, free flowing. I think, okay, I think that like, it's really good to show us not just what you think your best work is, also like show us something um, that you might not be happy with that might be a bit different but like not all it doesn't also just have to be all images it can be um videos um sound files you can do a performance in the actual interview if you want to so it's really up to you like it, you know the criteria says you know um submit 10 images 10 to 12 images but you can also bring other things on, along on the day we're not going to like so oh, no sorry can't see that like you know that wasn't in your proposal so mm -hmm. um and, and I don't know. maybe yeah. do you want to speak to the format of how to because sometimes it's confusing whether to upload individual images or yeah um so scott's just put the um how to apply link in the chat and if you we are trying to stream like that because students have found difficult difficulties with that before but i also suggest that you also just email us your images so you've got our email addresses there if you're also just email us if you're having any issues getting yep. that to upload and we'll we'll, we'll we'll help you get that sorted out because um yeah we understand that can be a bit stressful um, um another curatorial question yeah, curatorial question. For curatorial students, will the folio look the same as fine art students? Um, could it include writing? Yes, 100%. Like, no, it, it, it won't look like um, fine art students at all. And especially because um, the last two years, curators have had to pivot all their exhibitions into online or public publication-based formats. So, yeah, we, we love to see some sample writings, um, draft exhibitions, exhibition mind maps, um, yeah. You can you can be a lot more um, uh, expansive about the kinds of materials you include for a curatorial student for sure. Um, and there's also a question about how many hours do we expect to study on campus and at home? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a good question because we have. Uh, I'm just trying to calculate in my head how many contact hours you you definitely have per week. You've got two hours on a Monday in theory two to three on a Wednesday for studio methods. 
two to three on a Thursday morning. Yeah, it's Monday, Wednesday, Thursday are your kind of days where you want to be on campus. Um, mm -hmm. And Thursday is a whole day because yeah. usually it will have the crits in the morning and then individual shoots with your mentors in the afternoon. But sometimes mm -hmm. they also happen on a Wednesday or a Friday. It, we, we do understand that people have work obligations, but the yeah. three days you definitely need to talk to your employer about is Monday, um, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, 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 Thursday, sorry, yeah. in the morning, in the mornings too. Yeah. And we have really good coffee on campus. Yes. Oh, actually, we have a fantastic library. We haven't even talked about the facilities. Like we have yeah. like 3D printing, um, all kinds of like, you know, because we have access to what people would get in an architecture department and in mm. industrial design, we can use those labs. We have a really good photography lab with really great um, 4k cameras um, we also have glass we have bronze casting um, you know and it's also interesting because like what uh, we had a student come across from VCA in undergrad do honors in um, fine art who's now studying in the architecture pro um, program so it, it's a great school in terms of like if you do want to change or test something else you can also meet those kinds of um, people while you're studying um oh so yeah. uh, under normal circumstances uh, the studios are usually open from like eight till like 10 30 most nights seven days a week but yeah. this year just because of covid we've had to yeah do the nine to five monday to friday and the other question um is about how much time do we have with our mentors outside of class? Nick, maybe I'll get you to answer that. Yeah, well, so it should be at least half an hour every week. Some, and usually they go longer because staff like to talk to their students. And sometimes it might be that you, you meet like for the first four weeks for half an hour, and then you might say, oh, I, you know, we've kind of exhausted that. I need to go and do some work. And then you might meet for an hour, an hour and a half every second week. So it's flexible with the student, but it's definitely, no shorter than half an hour every week. Hmm. Um, any other questions? Like you can also like email us. Like I know sometimes it's like the question doesn't hit you until later. So feel free to, um, yeah. So we've got five more minutes um, for the session. So. Um, Nick and I are just going to stare at each other for five minutes if you don't yeah. say like Marina Abramovich yeah. performance. Oh, what kind of analog? Yeah, okay, we have black and white. We definitely have black and white. Um, and I don't think we have color though. But um, yeah, there's a really good, I think there's two black and white studios. Um, and that's yeah. also, I was just thinking, not to mention all the incredible technicians we have here with yeah. like amazing photo skills and yeah, expertise. Mm. Yeah. And the, the technician staff is a really kind of overqualified and um, we, you know, we have people that come from engineering and some really amazing um, welding fabricators and casting um, wizards. So, and they, and because we are a smaller group, um, the, the tech staff are, are kind of a bit more willing to get in there with you and, and, and help co-fabricate things with you. Yeah, I seem to recall one of the tech staff coming to um, some of our crits this semester because they were so excited about some of the work. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is the access to the, how often? Yeah, I mean, there are different workshops that are open at different times, but um, honours, again, because we're a small group, your, your access hours are different to what they'd be like. They're more structured in undergrad, but because we also have a technician who works with us specifically in honours, um, they will kind of find ways to get you in outside of the kind of the, the normal times. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I just yeah. sorry to interrupt. I saw a really great question from An Angelica about are there many students who apply for fine art who come from different undergrad bachelor backgrounds? Um, um, well, yeah. like, we yeah actually that's that's a really good question in the yeah. last couple of years we like this year we've got someone who came from design which yes. has been really great and two years ago we had a student who came from a dance practice and um actually it we're really open to that to students coming uh, across into a fine art um 
yeah, so it, we're really open to that. So it's not, it's as long as um, you've got um, a, a kind of um, equivalency, it's not a problem. Like, you know, if you haven't studied it, but, you know, it's based on your folio and also our conversation. So we'll get a sense of whether, you know, it's a good idea for you to come in now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and um, another question from Amber about curating, art history and curating, what should I be aspiring to achieve in my third year if I want to get into honours? Um, it's a good question. Like, I think what you really want is just some, well, first of all, some, uh, some you know, some or exhibition concepts that you can um, test in your third year and then either show us in the interview or um, develop. Like one, we have one uh, curatorial student who came straight from third year into honours this year and she had this project in her, you know, in her second semester project studies third year, um, which was too big for that unit. And so she actually applied with that project to develop it across a whole year. And it's been, it actually could be a master's. It's a very big project. So yeah, but in terms of a grade, I think we're we're not we're not being obsessive about the exact grades, is my understanding, but we usually look for around a distinction or above. Is that about right, Nick? Yeah, but again, we also understand that, you know, there's certain things that have transpired in the last couple of years that that have made you know, people study difficult. So of course. Yeah. It, 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 it's um, it's contingent on the interview, the folio and the conversation. Yeah. And the project you're pitching, like having yeah. a really so solid idea. You don't, as Nick said, you don't have to stick to the project for the whole year. In fact, lots of people come in and immediately overturn the project. But we just want to see the, the capacity to formulate um, a good idea for a project and kind of point to the kind of re research resources you might be looking at and the methods that you might employ to, you know, scope the project out. Mm, 100%. Maybe we should leave it at that. Yeah. And th this session has been recorded and I think um, it's going to be put up, uh, you know, on the internet and, and shared with all of you if anyone wants to revisit any of the information. And as Nick said, just email either of us anytime. We're super happy to chat through anything and yeah. yeah, look forward to hopefully meeting some of you at uh, the interviews later in the year. Yeah, good luck with the rest of what's in front of you in this year. <laughs> yeah.